This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1595, Where to Meet Men Offline, by Dr. Diana Kirshner of lovein90days.com. Hello, everybody, and thanks so much for joining today on Optimal Relationships Daily. I'm your host and narrator, Greg Audino. Happy to be bringing you another piece of writing from Dr. Diana Kirshner, who has a lot of great insight about relationships in general, uh, particularly the early dating stages. And this article is no different, as she offers some ideas for how to meet singles offline, which is a bit less common these days with all the uh, dating apps out there. So let's hear what she's got for us and optimize your life. Where to Meet Men Offline by Dr. Diana Kirshner of lovein90days.com Are you wondering where to meet men offline? Are you getting sick of endlessly swiping and getting nowhere? Well, here are some awesome places to meet guys, and I do mean great guys, the old-fashioned way, face-to-face, where you can feel whether you have chemistry right from the start. So here are six powerful tips on where to meet men. Where to meet men tip number one, sign up for mentastic activities. Mentastic activities are ongoing classes or activities that really interest you and that have lots of men in them. This means that there is not that awful pressure you feel when you go to a singles event. A relationship can develop naturally. Since you are selecting activities that you enjoy exploring, you will have a common interest right off the bat and lots to talk about. Here are some examples. Finance, artificial intelligence, investing, business, or leadership at your local college's school of continuing and professional studies, rock climbing, golfing, snowboarding or skiing, hiking, dancing, wine or cigar tasting, and co-ed city sports teams. These usually have an even mix of men and women. Where to meet men tip number two. Choose the more advanced mentastic activities. Choose classes or activities that are more advanced if possible, as these will have greater numbers of men in them. A more specialized business course, for example, like classes in investing in hedge funds or commercial real estate. Choose activities with intense goals, like triathlons, marathons, or other advanced running, swimming, and cycling events and training programs, as they will have more men in them. For example, advanced hikes with the Sierra Club can be great for meeting men. If need be, work your way up to these more challenging events, and check your local learning annex. Where to meet men tip number three. Do quick research into fun activities. Do a bit of research online to find even more activities to meet men. There are so many out there. Google any activity, class, club, or topic, plus the name of a major city near you. Check out meetup.com and peruse its groups. Look into volunteering for a local or national political group, Habitat for Humanity, or another nonprofit that attracts men. If you like baseball, go to sabr.org to find a Society for American Baseball Research chapter that you can join in a city near you. Just make sure that you choose activities you would enjoy. Where to meet men tip number four. Meet the guys around you. Next, find and say hello to three new men every day. Assuming you are in a safe or public place, make eye contact, smile, and say hi, or ask for some help. This is what I call the Marsha Cross technique. Actress Marsha Cross was in her 40s when she met her husband by chatting with him in a flower shop. She is now the ecstatic mother of twin girls. What if you don't encounter a lot of men in your daily routine? So vary it. Try a new grocery store, dry cleaner and pharmacy, or coffee or sandwich shop at lunch. Take the train or bus to work instead of driving. Check out a new gym, bookstore, or dog park. If you're shy, you can start by saying hello to women or less threatening men and then work your way up to the hotties. If someone hits on you and you're not interested, simply say, I enjoyed chatting, but I'm not available. Where to meet men tip number five. Find or create a fun event that enlarges your network. Find or create a fun event for this week that exposes you to a whole new network of people, preferably a network with a lot of men. For example, you could throw a potluck party and invite your friends and their friends, volunteer for a pet adoption day at the park, get yourself invited to your coworker's party, or attend a learning annex class this week on how to buy foreclosed property. So remember, find and say hello to three new men at the activities. For example, Cindy, a divorced 50-something nurse, was burnt out with digital dating and decided to take a break. 
She wanted to try something completely different. So she entered coaching to focus on how to find her soulmate, a great guy who was truly like-minded. Cindy's coach encouraged her to find mentastic activities that she would enjoy that also had men participating in them. Cindy was a lifelong dog lover and decided to volunteer to walk dogs at the nearest no-kill shelter. Lo and behold, she hit it off with John, a lanky redhead with a heart of gold, who was the director of the shelter. They're now dating up a storm, having fun doing fundraising and other meaningful animal service work that they love to do together. Where to meet men tip number six. Teach a course that attracts men. If you have the skills, you can also teach a course that attracts men at your local community center, learning annex, or school, like the inner game of baseball or Asian etiquette for businessmen. You'll be in your element, at maximum charisma, and usually surrounded by men who look up to you. You just listened to the post titled, Where to Meet Men Offline, by Dr. Diana Kirshner of lovein90days.com. And thanks a lot to Dr. Diana for this post, full of good ideas, uh, full of places that I, when I was a single man, did indeed hang out at. (laughs) Now, I know I usually supplement these articles with some thoughts of my own, but today, just this once, uh, I'm going to spare you and instead share a funny story uh, before I let you go. So, when I was a little bit younger, like right out of college, I would occasionally do some modeling jobs. And at the very beginning, I would do these like stock photos in which they would basically uh, hire and take a small group of models, go to like a coffee shop or something, take literally hundreds, if not thousands of photos of us, like emphasizing different people, different conversations, different scenarios, etc. And then these pictures would basically get sold to any company or website or whatever uh, looking for stock photos. So these pictures, uh, they tend to not disappear. And they continue to pop up in random places, and they always give me a good laugh when they do. And when I was looking for an article to share in this episode, the first one I looked at had a stock photo in it. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be funny if uh, one of my old photos showed up in an article I was reading from? Anyway, so the, uh, the article I was looking at was not a good fit, so then I found another one. Uh, And in doing so, simultaneously entered into the Twilight Zone and saw that in this very article that I just read from, one of my old stock photos is front and center. So, uh, if you do end up following the link to this post, which is provided in the episode description, as they always are, uh, you will see a 22-year-old Greg at the end of the table in a tan button-down shirt, uh, behind the two models having a conversation uh, that are right in frame. Good times. Very good times. It's too bad I only got paid a day rate. Okay, that's it for this one, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming today and listening to my stories. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.